largely out of work. Before the invention of the blast furnace, iron was smelted in small forges, which used charcoal as fuel. The growing scarcity of wood for making charcoal for a time checked the growth of the iron industry. Until 1784, wrought iron couldn't be made by using coal or coke as fuel, because it contained sulphur and the sulphur made the iron brittle. But then Henry Court discovered that it was possible to use coal and coke as long as it didn't come in contact with the fuel. So suddenly the mass manufacture of iron was possible. The Inuit Eskimos have dozens of words to describe snow. Powdery snow, soft snow, hard snow, snow with flakes the size of dinner plates. It's all still snow, but the properties are different. Likewise, we have cast iron, steel and wrought iron. And fundamentally, it's all made of the same stuff, iron. It's just the carbon content that varies. Cast iron has quite a high carbon content. Steel is kind of in the middle, and wrought iron has a very low carbon content. Cast iron is very hard, and is quite brittle when it cools down. Wrought iron, with a very low carbon content, stays malleable, and it's more likely to bend than break. And steel can be left soft, or made hard by tempering it. This involves heating it up to cherry red and then plunging it into oil or water. Steam update has arrived. And Cold Harbour Mill bursts into life once more. But, hey, 
studying archaeology 